Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the City of Farmers Branch study session meeting. It is Tuesday, April 6, 2021. The time is 3 p.m. We will begin with A1, discuss regular agenda items. Council Member Rotana. Council Member Norwood. Nothing for me. Council Member Lynn. I have questions about uh, uh, three items now. Uh, the first one being on I3, which is uh, the Board and Commission appointments. Uh, I'm just curious, is, uh, is any type of background check done uh, to our uh, candidates for various boards and commissions? If so, what and how in-depth is that? Uh, if we're just looking to see if they're current on the water bill, then I'd like to know if we need to start looking at some other type of uh, uh, background check that would be a little bit more in depth for some of our board and commission members as well as council. Thank you, I'll take that. Uh, city Secretary Amy Pucana, the background check is per our city ordinance requirement. It's done with HR. It's um, a basic background check. Um, we also do, we check their water bill to make sure everything's paid there. We check, um, I'm trying to think what else we do. Water bill, background check, liens, make sure they're registered voter, just the typical. Okay, so I guess what brought this to my attention was there was another city where there was actually a convicted felon who got on the ballot to run for public office, and I'm trying to find out whether uh, our background checks, uh, if somebody was convicted of a felony, whether we would know about that or how would that information be disclosed to know whether really this person should be on uh, serving the public. A convicted felon would not be a registered voter, so we'd probably catch it at that point. Usually convicted felons are not able to vote, so they would catch it. Okay, uh, but if, let's just say, their name did appear on the voter's roll and they had been convicted of a felony, would the background check that HR does uh, flag that? It would. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, my next question is in regards to I-6, let me just find it. Uh, so with respect to the uh, uh, grant program or partnership program, I'm just curious as to how much money is left, is still left available uh, for this year for anybody who wanted to take advantage uh, of applying for that uh, in order to fix their this is, this is the first projects being taken out of the stormwater $100,000 that had been set aside. Wow. So we still have $90,000 remaining after this project. Okay. Thank you. And then uh, on I-9, uh, tonight we're being asked to uh, essentially recreate the Sustainability Committee without hearing any presentation uh, to give us rationale for doing so. So uh, I'd like to at least hear from the Sustainability Manager at another meeting and make a presentation as to why this is necessary before I vote for creating uh, a board like this. Um, and I'd like to know at that time what they would be charged with doing. Uh, there were a number of questions that I noted from uh, what was the sustainability committee and what they did in the past. And so I would request that this item be tabled to uh, some future meeting. Okay. Councilmember Bob Brenner, any comments to I-9 before we go through your items? Are, are you finished? Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any comments other than uh, just a, a response on uh, I-9 there and, you know, sustainability, you know, at some 
we have to create some form of sustainability for the city, and I know the staff works hard on that and, and to be sustainable. But uh, you know, I think to have citizen input is a is a solid uh, uh, partnership with the staff as we work towards sustainability. So uh, I'm comfortable with leaving it on. But Councilman Driscoll, as it relates to I nine. Uh, beg your pardon, Mayor? As it relates to I-9, what are your, your thoughts on tabling it or moving forward tonight? I'd like to move forward with it tonight. Um, I don't know any business, uh, any organization really, small, medium, or large, that's not concerned with sustainability. And uh, I certainly know that uh, the Pentagon, the Intel Services, uh, all levels of government, they're planning and working on sustainability, and it's a high priority. And everyone I know that works in business, it's a priority as well. So I'd like to keep it. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Rotana. I'd like to go ahead and move forward with the committee. Councilmember Norwood. I don't see any reason to table it. I, in fact, I'd like to hear from the sustainability manager, and I would note that there was a presentation included with the packet that we got. So. Hi, uh, Alex Formakis, Sustainability Manager. So uh, just kind of a quick background um, on the committee uh, about bringing it back. Um, so as kind of was mentioned, they were creating a standing committee uh, focused on sustainability uh, and environmental stewardship. It's gonna provide focused residential input and um, kind of an active voice uh, similar to other boards and commissions. Are there any other questions? Councilor Merlin? Thank you for coming up and speaking. And uh, yes, I'd like to know what will be different about this committee versus the one that we sunsetted earlier. Uh, one of the projects that stands out in my mind was the uh, water uh, conservation kits. I don't know how many of those kits we purchased, a bunch. There was no strategy for distribution and I don't know how many we still have left. And I don't know if there's a strategy for distribution uh, for those. So, you know, how do we uh, ensure, I guess, future events uh, are gonna be successful when uh, the Sustainability Committee is looking to do things? And uh, is, there, is there a strategy at this time that outlines a, number, a series or number of events that they should be doing or that they would or you would like them to do versus us just creating this committee and saying oh well y'all figure out what's important get back to us so i'm just looking for some justification rather than just bringing on another board just so we have a board mm -hmm. what is a true purpose so we'll be developing a sustainability plan which is in draft form right now and so we'll be focusing all of the um, actions of that board of that committee around that plan. So we'll have a framework, kind of a guiding light with that document. And so they'll be able to go um, work to advance the initiatives that are laid out and provide research to council or, um, you know, kind of all focused around that sustainability plan. So there's gonna be a, some more structure there. Okay, and the, the members that'll be assigned to that committee uh, will know that their services are advisory to the council and not to dictate policy, correct? I believe so. All right, thank you. Um, do you want to take a pass? Since Alex wasn't here for the water conservation kit, I came up here to answer that one. Uh, as a staff, we only bought 500 kits. We limited to what the original scope was out of concern that you raised and how many folks are gonna want this. So if there's another demand, we can always buy more. We, we got 500, um, we've given out most of them. We probably got about 75 to 100 left. Uh, we were promoting them either through, well, when Branch Connection was open, we'd send and put them out there or here at City Hall or through the rec center. So as those facilities in terms of construction or reopening come back on board, we'll try to push out the remaining 75 to 100 through those means uh, or any other way we can figure out to get those out to the public. You're welcome. Okay. 
Um, Councilmember Norwood, I know that you were you were up. Do you have anything else to, to add? On I nine, just on I nine. Oh, no, I don't have anything else to add on on I nine. I think that um, you know we we have an opportunity here with the next board and commission appointments to choose the the composition of that that committee and and also that uh, to give direction if we want to. So I'm comfortable. Okay. All right. Councilmember Lynn, did you have any other items to discuss? No. Okay. Councilmember Baumgartner. None. Councilmember Driscoll. None. All right. Then we will move on to A2. Discuss holiday lighting and decor plans. Every three months, man. Good afternoon, Council, uh, Mayor. Thank you all for having me here today. Jeff Fairchild, Special Events Manager. Can everyone hear me fine? Great. Uh, I'm here today to talk about Christmas decor enhancements for the uh, City of Farmers Branch. Um, today we have a lot of ideas to present. I'm going I'm to take you back a little bit, um, a little history here of what we have been doing in the city, not just to include uh, lights and decor, but also activities just kind of give you a, a, a scope of, of what we are doing here as a community, uh, our department, and, and across the board here in, in Farmers Branch. So uh, current events, so almost up to 10 events here uh, that we produce uh, in Farmers Branch and, and the Parks and Rec Department spread out across our various divisions. That includes the uh, special events team, the, uh, the rec center, the aquatic center, and our historical park. So we have a good uh, kind of spreading the resources there and everyone's kind of focusing on, on different events there. I'll kind of quickly walk you through those. Uh, letters to Santa, the Skating Under the Stars, which of course is the, uh, the partnership we have with the Dallas Stars, which we are about to renew for another three years. Uh, that, that was uh, started three years ago. Of course, our annual tree lighting, which is uh, moved now to Liberty Plaza in the Grove and kicks off the month of December. Uh, the historical park does the Christmas teas, uh, pancakes and pajamas, and letters to, uh, I'm sorry, the Santa makes house calls is with uh, the rec center. And then of course, we follow up with our holiday markets at the Grove. And then our, uh, our last one, the uh, one that's focused on the, the tastes and traditions of the Latino culture. So those are just kind of a, an overview of the events that we do here in uh, Farmers Branch. So our current light locations, and those are what I'm gonna kind of go through first. So the, what you'd see in trees in the different areas. And so the Grove, that is where we do uh, almost 50 tree trunks, the uh, drip lights in some of the trees there, about 20 of the trees. Holiday Park, down on the, the east side of the city, a beautiful 40 lit string tree. We do Liberty Plaza, which is the, the city's 70 foot, 75 foot string tree. And then of course those beautifully wrapped uh, red, white, and blue uh, trees that you see there uh, done by the contractor. Of course, entrance to City Hall, you see uh, the oaks, 26 oaks, the, the wrapped here on the, on the, here on the, in the entryway into City Hall. We have the Fatinia trees out here in the front get wrapped as well. And then we also do Tompy Dyer Park on the north and south side of that. So kind of a good representation of lighting here in, in the city. So now we kind of move on to the light decor. And those are things that we uh, saw last year with the police department and, and what we did there on the lawn there and just the tremendous and nice look that gave us. So lighted decor there and those ornaments that we uh, rented. We're also uh, uh, have done Tompy Dyer where you see a farmer's branch and lit up in, in the letters there as you're coming into town there. Uh, we do the snowflakes on the building. We do animated displays in Liberty Plaza, the Grove and the ice rink. And these are displays that we have uh, kept in good working order from uh, previous year's events. So kind of gives you a good overview of what we're all doing here in the branch, not just for, for visual, but also for actual hands-on and, and, and interactive things. And of course, unfortunately, this past year, we saw a lot of those uh, get canceled, unfortunately, but we are back. Uh, we'll be back this year. So we feel very confident on that. So that just kind of gives you uh, the overview of what's been done. So what's going to be new this year? So we're gonna kick off with a, uh, a best decorated location contest. And this involves not just residents, but also a business angle. And then for residents, uh, we're reaching out to HOAs and you know, it's kind of a best decorated where you would submit your photo of your house, your resident, and we would vote. And uh, it would be a kind of a online thing. And then 
uh, like the third week of December or second week, then we would be announcing uh, the, the best decorated houses of, of Farmer's Branch and let residents and kind of take a driving tour basically on your own. But it's, so that would be a way to engage the residents, uh, the homeowners. We could also do something for the uh, apartments, you know, best decorated uh, patio and, and, and balcony and things of that nature. So uh, getting them involved uh, in that way. Um, also want to get the businesses involved and really excited about this. We can have several categories. We can have almost like a, a mom and pop category and then also have a larger uh, business category. And that could be best decorated storefront. It could be best property, but something to kind of get them engaged to where they're kind of seeing our vision as well and, and getting involved with that. And, you know, we can offer uh, you know, prizes. I say prizes, but, you know, we could, uh, for, for 2022, the city could offer, hey, if the grand prize winner, we could use our lighting contractor to enhance their business in a way. So it kind of is incentivizing them to uh, participate if they see that the city could help them uh, in future years. So that's just uh, one of the uh, best decorating location contests that we would uh, be facilitating in parks. Uh, dog park event, happy holiday at the Barneywood Dog Park. And then uh, we want to bring back the Santa on the move. If you recall, we just kind of created that. Uh, within about a week last year when we canceled uh, all of our holiday events. And this is where we did the 33-mile procession through Farmer's Branch that involved Parks Department, Police Department, and Fire Department, and really just had good response on that. So we're going to bring that back. We're going to fit that in at somewhere in the, in the month of December. Uh, but those, those are some of the events that uh, we would like to uh, introduce for 2022. So we really liked what we saw at the police department last year on the lawn, and so we would like to uh, expand that, if you will. And I'll get to a little more detail on how we uh, propose to do that, but these are the, the, the locations that we would like to uh, expand that. We've already identified uh, we have, you know, the spacing and the power of these uh, facilities that we could kind of get a, a consistent look throughout the city. So if you were driving through, you would see this. Now, kind of get to that in a few the slides here. But when I refer to those seven city locations, that's what I'm referring to right here, just kind of spreading it out amongst the, uh, some of the cities or some of the locations. Uh, they do have foot traffic uh, for the public. Others are not. They're more like the fire department. It's just kind of a visual to uh, include them in the discussion as well. So that's kind of what is new. So we have some options for you uh, for the council to consider. And we've got three different price levels to look at here. So when we say a consistent look throughout the city in these seven locations, this is the kind of look that we're projecting here. So, the, so when you're driving through and you see these ornament type things, you know you're in Farmer's Branch. And so this is the kind of the look that we're talking about uh, when I say theme decor at select locations. The drip lights in the grove, this is probably our biggest thing that we see almost people mesmerize when they're walking through that they, lo they love the drip lights these icicle lights we love to enhance those right now they're about uh, 18 to 20 trees that we have lit and it's just a matter of more funding to buy more lights and then for the contractor to to put those lights involved so we really would like to expand that because that is probably our biggest feedback uh, as a, a really this is kind of cool they don't see that in other cities and then select interactive photo op decor. These are things where the public could, you know, if you're walking through the, the Rose Garden, you have a photo op where you can, with your family, you can, you know, maybe it's a, a, a large Santa chair or a photo op with the outlines of a reindeer. So those are things that we can do for about uh, that level of additional funding for 2022. Going up a little bit higher. So we can do everything in option A that I just went through. So now we can start seeing some specific looking nice decor pieces, as you can see there in the presentation. You, you can start seeing these around town, these archways, these beautiful uh, lit, these candy canes. So we can really start enhancing some of these locations with some really nice visual beyond just uh, lights and things. You know, animated deer in select locations. If you can imagine walking through the, the rose garden and seeing deer, you know, lit and just kind of enhancing that. So that would be your next level of investment here at the uh, option B. And then finally, we're going to get to option C. And this is a really exciting uh, option here for us. Uh, you know, as, as we have been doing events now uh, across the street or, or down the, uh, at the Grove, uh, you know, we have our 75-foot lit tree. What we're noticing is, is after the first night when we do the tree lighting, it then becomes a challenge. It's almost kind of a, a disconnect, if you will, from the rest of what's going on over there at the Grove. You've got the ice rink going. You've got the, the Grove activities with Santa's house. It's, it's almost, we've noticed that even during events, uh, it's a safety thing because people want to go over there because that's, that's our, our lit tree. And we were thinking, uh, what would be nice to have an authentic looking tree, uh, at least 50 foot high, 
that now becomes a center focal point, a definite photo op, a, a destination location, if you will. And we've identified this piece of property. This is actually right down the street at uh, Denton Drive and Bill Moses. And it's that parcel of land that's adjacent to DART, their station there. It's right across from the Grove and right next to the, uh, the uh, across the track from the apartment complex. This land really comes into nice play with this particular option. We could develop it in a way of uh, putting in some power, putting in a concrete platform. This would become this location, as you can see uh, in the design here, for this tree. It could be uh, branded at the base there. That's about, a, just to give you perspective, that's about a six foot base. And so there could be a, a nice branding around there. The tree is about 40 foot and then that topper is another four. So it gives you this, it really just ties in nicely with that area. I think it really, uh, you know, people will gravitate toward this. Having once worked in a location in a city where they had a downtown tree, I, you can just see where people are getting in their cars, they're driving to this, they're taking pictures. It really becomes that focal point. So, and this land uh, potentially could be used for other purposes throughout the year, for other programming opportunities. Uh, so it just kind of fits nicely in there and that we could reasonably develop it in a way of, of with some, some, like I say, a, a concrete pad and some power to get it up and running and for this. So we could still do the uh, theme decor at those seven locations around town, uh, additional drip lights in the grove, and then uh, enough money to kind of uh, parcel out and do some of these uh, interactive displays around town. So those are the three options that we've uh, kind of developed so far and just would love your feedback and discussion on how we could possibly move forward. Awesome. Jeff, thank you. Wonderful presentation. Councilmember Rotana. Thank you so much. Um, my first question is related to the to the tree. Would there be a way, like let's say we, are, we would love the option A, or maybe option B rather. Um, have you all um, itemized just the tree um, and some of those elements? So maybe we want to do, let's say option A with the tree. I, I do agree that I think the tree is, and I've seen it in other cities, it's a great draw, mm -hmm. um, a great you know Instagram moment. Um, but I was wondering if there are certain elements that have been itemized to where we can kind of create our own, a menu of sorts um, if we decide to kind of, you know, maybe be a little more conservative this year and, or, or what have you, um, maybe do option B with the tree, right? Ha, have you all done that? So the tree is, uh, and, and of all what I presented today, and I apologize for just now bringing this up, the tree would be the only thing that the city would purchase initially. Okay. It makes the most sense to purchase this tree and we would buy the ornament package and we would buy the tree and then pay this company to professionally install that. So in order to do that, uh, about a $70,000 investment for year, for year one, but you own the tree. And then it cost about another 11,000 for having this company install it. We would store it. Uh, so 70,000 and then about another 20 to 25 we feel would be necessary to get this land ready for use. And that includes putting the concrete pad in and putting the power necessary and, and some landscaping. So right away, uh, you're looking at least 100,000 if you're even just wanting to get the tree in the conversation. So that's gotcha. why we put it at the, at the last one there. So. That so if we did, for example, if we did option A with this package, it'd be about $150,000. The, the tree alone is going to cost you at least a hundred. Sure, sure, sure. sure. But, but it's yes, an investment. It's, It'll, yes. It's or a, something that we'll, we won't have to. It's yeah. year one, like the ice rink. You, it's the sure. initial expenditure, but then. Got it. Year. Thank you. Um, and then my, my other question is related to the seven sites. So I don't see anything west of 35 on the list. And so I was wondering if maybe that's something where we can maybe potentially, um, and I apologize if, I, if, if there is one, but when I looked at it, there wasn't anything west of 35. Good catch, you're right. So, you're right. Um, not. so that's um, obviously it's something that I think we would need to re revisit. Um, and maybe it's talking to um, the developers in that area, some of the, the, the owners of that area, um, and creating a, a public-private partnership for that, because there is a big parcel of land right there off of Luna and Valley View that is being unused on either side. Um, and, I, and I know that you know residents in, in my district in that area feel kind of separate always they feel segregated from the rest of the city and I think this would be a great way to to do that maybe or even if it's just lighting along Valley View where it connects them there needs to be some type of connection there if we're wanting to do this and that's um, one of the things that I would definitely um, ask to include okay absolutely um, other than that I think that's all I have mayor thank you okay thanks councilmember Norwood so I guess my thoughts are more along the practical lines and uh, so there's money in the parks budget to do the 175? This would be, this is an ask. This is what we're asking you to, 
approved moving forward. Okay. So, so our city manager is here, right? So have you, as Charles, have you identified potential funding sources for this type of project? <laughs> we, we could manage to find the, up to, up to the option C. Yeah. If council desires. Okay. Well, I do like the idea of the tree. And so, uh, and the fact it's reminds me, it's very similar to what we did with the skating rink where we purchased that and then partnered with the stars. And so, um, so I think that that could be a good idea. I, I do also uh, sympathize with, uh, council member Ritana that there's nothing out there on the West side and, you know, potentially we could look at, moving some of the things that are already in this plan or that were in last year's plan and moving them out that way. So I would support trying to begin including Mercer Crossing as part of our overall thinking in the, into this plan. And I think that's all I have. So thank you. Council Member Lynn. Jeff, I'm just curious, uh, what have we spent like the last two years on an annual basis? If you include the lighting contractor and the, and the events that we produce, uh, about 150 to 160, depending on how the ice rink shakes okay. out. Okay. And uh, I actually thought last, last year was really nice, despite what we were going through. Uh, so would this amount be in addition to that? We're talking uh, amounts over and above. Yes, sir. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. And we would, I just wanted, and we would probably need some of that initially because uh, when you buy the tree they would want the deposit and so there might have to be a need for some of that before the, the fiscal year started but um, I just want to put that out there for that. Councilman Lynn, do you have a, a direction you would lean based on that or? So if I'm understanding correctly, let's just say we chose option three or C for example and that, in addition to what we've already spent, now we're back at the $350,000 range, okay, which is what we had scaled back from several years ago. Uh, That's just for the, that would be just for the first year until we purchase the tree and get that land. So you're looking about 100000 of that would just be the one time. In, in, in. Okay, so then... Uh, and that hundred thousand is in the one seventy five. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, so sir. so by year two, you're back down to two twenty five. Two twenty five, roughly, which I think is probably within reason for a city our size. So I, I certainly wouldn't object to that. Okay. Right. Councilmember Baumgartner. Yeah, I, d just for clarification on the math, though, I thought I heard also eleven thousand to put it up. That's going to be ongoing every year, and another. And I, I think we would. What would we, cost to store? We would store it at our facility, so storage would not be an issue. And the eleven thousand, I have, I'm confident that we could find that in the existing yeah, budget. Yeah. Okay, so so that would be the only ongoing fee would mm -hmm. be the, uh, the just the an, the thousand. annual okay. installation. Yes. Yeah. You, you know, just from a budget-minded perspective and being conservative, it's difficult for me to look at a. A, a, a budget that is, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word here, a non-essential, um, loved, you know, and, and I believe it sets a tone for a community and all that, but to take a look at a budget and basically we're talking about doubling what we spent, uh, you know, and they're just a, uh, in my mind, it, it, you know, it seems like a, a step process is be better. I do like the tree best of all, and uh, would support the council. You know, we have been approached by a, a local organization that has offered to provide some funding. It's still in the very early stages, but at least there is interest from the community uh, from or in an organized effort to perhaps provide some assistance, but it's, it's still early. I just wanted to put that out there. That could be as a way to help fund this in the initial year. Councilman Driscoll. Yes, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, I had a question also. Uh, I heard 70,000, I think, to purchase the tree. Yes, sir. And 11 for kind of installing it and setting everything up. And how much did you say for preparing the pad? 
we're looking about 20, estimating about 20 to 25. So that, that gives you your roughly about 100 that we're anticipating for that piece of land okay. and the tree that goes on it. All right, yes. Um, yeah, my, my thoughts are um, I like the, the large tree as kind of a, a statement piece or a focal point for the city as the best idea. And I like the idea of biting the bullet one time and buying it and then we can reuse the tree. And I would just note that that would tie into our sustainability goals as well and save money from buying a tree every year or changing things every year. And um, I would wonder with other decorations, are we, we, we able to use them year after year? Just thinking about the cost side. It'd be a rental type of agreement. And, and the other things that we've done in the past. It'd be a We're rental. Buying new things every year, are we? No, sir. It'd be uh, ideally about every two to three years you want to kind of freshen things up. Right. So about every three years. And the rental actually would be less in year two and three when you're buying like with these seven locations. Um, so that's, that's kind of how that would work. So it actually would hopefully get some cost savings in that second and third year. But by year three, I think we'd probably, I'd be in front of you again with probably some, some new visions and, and ideas for, for what to, to do around the city. I think all of the ideas you outlined are very nice. And uh, uh, I'm a little concerned about kind of going full bore and you know, spending a lot of money. We still are coming out of the pandemic. We still are coming out of the recession. And uh, we don't know how things are going to shake out the rest of the year. And there are businesses and families, you know, um, going through tough times. So I would prefer not to go on the more extravagant end. Uh, but I definitely like the idea of the large tree. And uh, also uh, to council, um, council member Ritana's point, I think if we could arrange some decorations and lighting and, and some things, decorations out on the west side, that would be really good. Um, and I would think we could kind of partner with some of the builders and developers out there that they would also want to contribute to that and uh, see the you know, nice neighborhood for the holiday season. Yes, sir. Thank you. So option, understand option C is where we're going. Okay. Say that again, Jeff. So op option C is the vote of choice. I feel like I'm here in option C. Yeah. And then find a way to get some stuff on the west side. Absolutely. And while I'm up here, this weekend kicks off Didn't Drive Live, April Saturday at the park. So I hope to see you all there. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Next is A3, receive a biannual update from the Historical Preservation and Restoration Board. Johannes Hilkema uh, with the uh, Historical Preservation and Restoration Board. Appreciate you letting me come up here and talk to you. Um, I'm so glad that I retired from teaching uh, right before COVID because if I had to use a computer to teach anybody, uh, we would have all shut the whole system down. Uh, direct teaching was, was something I could do. Teaching into a computer was something I I missed. <laughs> so anyway, uh, if I press the right button, there you go. Let me just uh, go over a couple of things. Our mission is to collect, preserve, interpret, and celebrate the history of the United States and Texas with an emphasis on Peter's Colony and Farmer's Branch. The vision to provide visitors high quality programs, exhibits, and events through living history experiences and mission-based education with a goal of becoming a fully accredited museum that offers programming with 
which will link our past to our future. We have meetings on the, uh, the fourth Thursday of every month, and you all are welcome to attend. Uh, 95% of our board members attend, attend each meeting. 90% of our members participate in volunteer duties at, at park events. That is, is, our board isn't just someone who comes to a meeting at the Dotson House and goes home at uh, 8 o'clock, you know. Our goal is to be involved in the park, to be involved with the individuals who are, uh, like Hillary, who are working every day to make that park successful. We maintained a successful board through the COVID-19 experience. Keenan Cemetery Subcommittee created a mission statement and updated Ordinance 2911 rules and regulations for Keenan Cemetery. And we'll present these updates to City Council for their approval. Supporters sta supported staff during programs and events sold out. The Mad Hatter tea was really good. Uh, and um, that's Anne chasing somebody through the park. So, uh, oh, that's Mrs. Hilcom and myself. We had a good dinner. <laughs> Goal was set to increase overall revenue opportunities and develop a plan for more sus sustainable operations. Staff is meeting this challenge by Developing sold out programs such as the holiday teas, canceled due to COVID, and Mad Hatter tea. Increasing the number of wedding and venue rentals. First quarter of uh, 2021 saw a 33% increase in rentals compared to first quarter. Increasing the number of private Girl Scout badge workshops and increasing the number of art classes and workshops. Uh, Witness to History recipient Marshall's Barbecue was recognized at the City Council meeting in March. And you see pictures here of uh, those folks being presented with their awards. Uh, uh, board Chair, look at that, there's my name. <laughs> board Chair, and I'm Board Chair because Ann had to step down uh, in order to to seek political opportunities on the board. So I stepped in as the, I was the vice chair. So board chair Johannes Hilcomer received the mayor's award of excellence in leadership. This award recognizes an individual who over time has demonstrated a long standing commitment to our city, embraced leadership roles within our city boards and does so with a servant's heart. And I appreciate that a lot. It's a good shot of me and the mayor, I think. Uh, Bonnie Newman, historical cultural specialist, was awarded the 2020 Distinguished Professional uh, from uh, DFW Directors Association. This award recognizes a professional who has made outstanding contributions to the park and recreation field through their leadership, research, advocacy, community outreach, and program development. The Texas Recreation and Park Society, TRAPS, awarded the Historical Park the State Award for Arts and Humanities. You know, these awards don't come to us just because uh, we have a sign up that says we're open. <laughs> uh, they get here because we have staff that really work hard because they love what they're doing. Uh, this was the first year the camp was held and it was also and it also won the TRAPS North Region Award for Arts and Humanities Programming Achievement. Upcoming activities, the board will assist with the 75th celebration held in conjunction with the Independence Day celebration. Man the historical park booth, information booth, direct visitors to watch the short film highlighting the history of Farmer's Branch and potentially handing out commemorative, commemorative giveaways. The Keenan Cemetery Subcommittee will assist Boy Scouts with placing flags on Veterans Day and Memorial Day. And that was, a, that was a great thing. We got the Boy Scouts, local troops involved in putting flags out on, uh, on Veterans Day and that will occur again 
on Memorial Day, and those kids had a great time doing that. And they got a sense of the history of the park and the history of their city. Uh, any questions? No, Mr. Elkema, just thank you very much for your, your leadership and commitment to the city. And I think, you know, we get to recognize uh, our Parks and Rec Department a little later with the Girls Make History Award uh, for yeah. the state recognizing them uh, with, with that success. So okay. that's great. But uh, Councilmember Rotana, do you have anything for Mr. Elkema? Mr. Hilkema, thank you so much for all you do for the city and for the historical park. Um, no, no big questions. The only thing I, I had was um, related to the Keenan, Cem Keenan Cemetery debrief. Do you have a date for that by any chance? Or does staff have a date for that? When would we be debriefed? Just out of curiosity. I'm if not, not y'all can just tell me later. I think we, we do plan on briefing the council on, on that shortly. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's yeah. fine. No worries. Yeah. You can just that, Send me yes. The yeah, so that's coming. And that, and that, that whole... Hopefully next board meeting. Oh, Excuse perfect. me. Thank you so much. Next board meeting. Perfect. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you got the assist from Mike over there. I appreciate that. Was that, that Michael? Yeah. yeah. I just heard. Okay. All right. So that's coming. <laughs> perfect. Yes. Thank you so that, much for all you And that's a do. great little project that's going on mm -hmm. in restoring and preserving and bringing up to... Uh, and, and just drawing attention to that cemetery. And it has some financial uh, rewards down the road, I think, if we, if we play our cards right. Yeah. Perfect. Sorry. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks. Councilmember Norwood. No specific questions. Thanks, Your Honor, for what you did. Thank you. Councilmember Lynn. Thank you. Always good to see you. Good to see you. Um, I had one, not so much a question, but just a comment that I wanted to make sure that uh, I kept top of mind with everybody. And that was, uh, we have Keep Farmers Branch Beautiful. And Pat Link, who heads that up, has expressed interest. I don't know if you've been in touch with her. Uh, I think the last I heard that she was waiting on a call from Ann, and mm -hmm. now Ann's no longer there. So I oh. don't want her to fall by the wayside. And I don't want farmer, uh, Keep Farmers Ranch Beautiful to fall by the wayside. Uh, don't forget about the Marsh Cemetery also. Yes. I know we talk about Keenan all the time, yes. but, but Marsh is equally important in that cemetery needs some help. Mm -hmm. uh, it needs a new fence around it. Uh, a lot of the markers are in disrepair. Uh, and hopefully I can have a conversation with you at another time. I have okay. somebody who will help to remove the old fence, provided we can get some donations or whatnot to secure a new fence. Mm -hmm. So, and um, I think one of the next to last Marsh descendants just recently passed away. She's not even buried there. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's at uh, Sparkman Hillcrest. But uh, uh, anyway, I want to make sure that okay. we, we do pay well, some attention to that. Too. We will. Good we deal. Will. The, uh, you know, I, I spent uh, years working at, a, at, a, at Hillcrest Memorial Park. Cemeteries are, are important uh, there. I have a particular interest because I worked in them. Uh, but cemeteries, our history. <laughs> and when you go to Keenan and you stand in front of a grave, you're standing in front of a story. Because, you know, 75 years ago, someone was buried there. People cried. I mean, it, they're important places and we need to invest time and, and it may require some money uh, to make these, make these things uh, stand out to the community. So, anything else? Councilmember Baumgartner. Thank you for your presentation, and I have no questions. Councilmember Driscoll. Yes, uh, thank you for your presentation. I enjoyed it very much. And as someone who studied history, I'd like to thank you for your devotion to the topic and the subject. And uh, history for all of us is very important to remember our roots and where we all come from. And I'd just like to compliment you and all the staff uh, on the historical park for winning the many awards that you have in the past, and including last year. And I have no questions, but thank you and keep the good work up. Thank you. Just one more word about the staff, Hillary and uh, Kim and Bonnie, uh, <clears throat> Cynthia, uh, Lauren Pringler. You know, it, it, I'm gonna take another minute or two if you don't mind. Far away. As a teacher, when I was teaching, I loved students that got A's. And some students were just motivated by the A. You know, it didn't really matter how they got there. <laughs> They got an A, all right? It didn't really, the work itself 
wasn't that important to them. They got an A. But you, you all have a staff here that are not interested in A's. <laughs> They're interested in the work. They're interested in history. They're interested in preserving and maintaining that history. So it's not that they're after awards. They just love what they do. And when you love what you do, uh, eventually it's recognized. So anyway, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing those words. It's definitely displayed by the, by the staff. So we appreciate all that you do, truly. Next is A5. Oh, sorry, I'll just go A4. Um, Ms. Johnson, uh, Representative Johnson, had other matters to attend to today down in the state that are keeping her from presenting today. We're going to move that to the next council meeting um, in April, so she will address us at that time. Uh, but uh, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. We, we understand what, what those time constraints are like down there. Uh, so uh, A5, discuss future agenda items. Councilmember Rotano. You know, I usually don't have many, but now I, I, today I have a few. Um, first, I, I would like to have a debrief, um, not just for our sake, but I think also for the sake of our, our residents around um, road humps, the policy, when we made the changes. There are now three, maybe four streets in my district that are wanting to do this. And, um, and so I just kind of want to, A, want to get a more clear understanding about that, but also it'll be an opportunity for our residents um, to be able to get a better understanding of the policy and what we could do um, to assist them to alleviate some of the issues that are happening in um, not only in my district, I think, but even just in other areas of the, of, of the city. Um, the other thing is, um, as you all know, the American Rescue Plan um, was, was voted on. And so I know that staff are starting to look at that, but I was on a National League of Cities call as part of the Human Development Committee this morning, and they had a really great speaker on that. And I think um, whether it's someone from NLC or someone else, but I think having an overview of what that looks like, even if we don't have the final numbers yet, just so we can be prepared, or when we do um, have a better understanding of, of what our allotment is. Um, the third thing, um, you know, I know I asked Representative Johnson to be here today. I know she was going to be, she, she wasn't um, sure if she was going to be able to be here to give us that um, mid legislative update, but. Um, I want to go ahead and, and maybe get on um, Representative Anchia's calendar to come and give us a, a legislative, a full legislative update in June, maybe even um, August, just depending on his schedule. I know there may be a special session, but um, just to go ahead and start th looking at that, um, since he'll be, be asked to do that quite a bit um, uh, come uh, the end of session. And then the last thing is um, I would love to get an expert um, to kind of brief us on redistricting, what that looks like, the process, redistricting. Uh, what that looks like, the process. Um, I know they're starting to have the preliminary numbers um, this month, and so, um, and, and I will defer to probably um, to Anchia's office and, and Johnson's office to see which month would be best based on when they're thinking the numbers would come. But um, but I know a lot of folks are not familiar. That only happens to every 10 years, and so just I think it'd be a great way for us to get a little more educated on that process. That those of those that may not be as familiar. So um, so that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Norwood. Nothing for me, Mayor. Councilmember Lynn. My hand doesn't write as fast as trying to get it out. Um, I just had a question regarding the board and commission candidates. Will we be having a interview session like we did? Thank you. We will. Similar processes last year's. Cool. Uh, Councilmember Baumgartner. Uh, nothing at this time. Councilmember Driscoll. Yes, thank you. Um, had to hand it over here. <laughs> We're working on a coordination. Um, I don't have anything new. I would just like to reiterate uh, some of the points that uh, Councilmember uh, Ritana made. Um, it is a legislative year, and you know there are good things and crazy things that uh, uh, are presented. And so I'm also interested in a full kind of update on you know what might be coming, and we know there will be bills and things being proposed on uh, police funding and all kinds of things, uh, and uh, as soon as we can have update on kind of what's likely to get through the legislature, that would be good, as well as the redistricting. Uh, that's all. Thank you. All right, next is executive session. B1, council may convene into a closed executive session pursuant to section 551.072 of the Texas Government Code to deliberate regarding, discuss the purchase, exchange, lease, or sale of real property south of Valley View, north of Farmers Branch Lane, east of I-35, west of Josie Lane. Discuss the purchase, exchange, lease, or sale of real property located at 3940 Spring Valley Road. 
Council may convene into a closed executive session pursuant to section 551.087 of the Texas Government Code to deliberate regarding discuss an economic development incentive agreement for Project HEART. We will recess. The time is 3.50. Thank you.